All right, Uncle Sam FM here. This is episode 10 of my American Football 19 series, and I am with Michigan State University, as you guys saw in the last video. I'm in college soccer, going back to school. Um, this is the first season with Michigan State. It's the 2021 season, and so what I thought I would do to start is just kind of look at my recruiting class. That's sort of what we call transfers in college sports world here in the United States. Uh, if you're a college team, you're not signing players, you're not buying players, you are recruiting players. Most colleges recruit players from high school. You also have transfers from other universities. Maybe a player gets a little disgruntled, doesn't like how much playing time he's getting at a university. So he will leave, he will transfer schools. And so we've seen a little bit of both of that with my recruiting class so I thought first thing we would do is look at that a little bit. Uh, we'll just go to our transfer history here, and you can see it's been busy, to say the least. I'm kind of having to learn as I go here. I've not done a uh, season, uh, a, a, a save with an NCAA soccer team in with my database, so I am kind of figuring it out. One thing I started, I realized when I first took the job in in December of last season, or November maybe, was that I was not going to be able to get most of the players who I would be able to sign from an academy, which the academy teams go up to 18 years old. So the idea here is that I would sign an academy player as he's leaving the academy. He can't play for the academy anymore once he turns 18. And then they come to my university where they play until they're about 23. The problem is most everybody who is going to be eligible to play the next season was two was already signed so anybody i could get from the academies were too young all of these players that you see this first few here mark parker too young max gonzalez too young so none of these guys are playing for me right now they're all uh, uh ineligible they're unregistered would be i guess the fn term and so my hope is that I don't lose all of them so that the next year they can become eligible. I'm kind of looking at it as, as what we call redshirting in, in, in American college sports. If you have a freshman, a first-year player who you don't think is going to be able to play, he's not maybe he's not good enough, maybe he's not physically mature enough, you do what's called redshirting where they sit out the year. And so that's kind of what I'm saying with these guys. Um and, and the reality is Mark Parker, sadly, I sign him and then he immediately <laughs> signs a transfer deal with Nantes and he'll be leaving uh, next year. So I'll have him on my squad for a whole season and he'll never play for me um, because of the age restrictions, which I guess I should probably look at that. Um, so if you go to, we'll go to our competitions here and look at, just, we'll just go to conferences because the rules are the same for conferences in NCAA D1. And if you go to rules, um, the... Squad registration, nobody over 23 and nobody under 19, which is the sort of the generally how it how it is in, in, in real life college sports. So uh, that is kind of a bummer. Um, so what I did do with my transfers, and we'll go back and look at that, is uh, I did to fill holes. I had I had needs, especially in center back. I, I, there were places which you you saw in the last video. I needed holes to, uh, to be filled. So <clears throat> I went and got transfers from other colleges, which happens in sports. Um, maybe not in the same way you have to do it in FM. You're not going to have, you know, in, in real life IRL, you're not going to have a, a college coach go to another college and speak with other players to try and get them to transfer. That kind of thing is illegal, but it's against the rules. Um, and so... But it, transfers do happen. So I went and got some guys. Um, this guy, sadly, he left again before he even played a match for me, uh, Omar. So I was really excited about him. He's an Icelandic national. Doesn't have any caps yet, but he's, you know, he, as you can see, he's got some pretty good attributes for a defender. Uh, tackling 13, marking 14. His heading's not great. Strength's not great. But positioning is a 15. I, I, these, these would dominate my division, college soccer. So I was kind of excited, but sadly, he's gone already. Did sign a few guys from Oakland. These are, I believe, all center backs. Garza, who is pretty good. Uh, Akpatu, who lacks determination, but he does have some good attributes, which make him a, a solid defender. And then uh, this guy, uh, Juan Kentu, who is a attacking midfielder. He's going to be my number 10. Um, 
he's got some pretty good attributes. He has a 13 in passing and a 13 in vision. I'd like for his decisions to be better, but that's the rating. That's a decent rating um, for our level. And so, yeah, so a lot of these gas transfers, and I am already, as you can see, starting in about August or September, I wanted to get guys signed from the academies that I can play next season. So I went to some of the local academies and signed uh, about three guys that will be eligible to play for me next year to go with the ones that I already have. So if you go look at our squad and you go down to these, all these guys who are unregistered, usually I hide these players, but for the purposes of this video, I, I made them visible so you can see. These are all players who cannot play because they are too young. They are, they're all under 19. Next season, I'm pretty sure they'll all be eligible and so I'll have a big group of freshmen playing. And so that's going to be kind of how I, how I build the squad into the team that I want it to be. Because right now I'm training them um, to be what I want them to be. And so that has kind of been the process recruiting wise. All right, now let's just look at the squad, my team that I've put together. Obviously, it's as we as I looked at in the last video, most of these players, they don't really fit kind of what I would like to do perfectly. But uh, as you can see from the results, things are going pretty well so far. And uh, I do have, and this is just kind of my squad selection view, I, I've picked up little tips from uh, around the scene to set up my squad selection view. I think I've even changed it recently. But uh, what, what you see here, first of all, is just information, um, you know, basic info, their player status. It, it kind of alerts me to, okay, are some of my guys wanted, which... Normally in a safe like this, these things don't really matter, but it kind of helps me like, okay, I've got fitness issues with, with my backup goalkeeper and my backup right back. <clears throat> so, um, so these things I need to keep an eye on all those wanted, which that's one of the obviously frustrating realities of coaching a, a managing a, a college team is going to be that some of my players are going to get signed out from underneath me, um, and during the season. And so that's going to be an issue. It's going to be depth is going to be kind of important. I've already I've looked around and seen and there are some teams that are already down to like 18 players so I, I want to try and keep a good healthy squad I do have a full right now 30 players registered and that's with the understanding that by the end of the season I'm not going to have 30 players so but uh, looking at and so the first few columns here is just basic information then you kind of get looking into our squad selection so what is my my uh, scout's opinion of my players' current ability, their potential ability, and then, of course, uh, their condition, their match sharpness. Um, height is kind of a thing that I'll look at every now and then, especially at center back like uh, Bernero and Garza. Obviously, Bernero is 6'4". That's a, that's a big guy. He's my tallest player. And so he maybe, you know, if I'm trying to decide between two guys, height will make an, it will, will kind of make a difference. And then, yeah, you know, I have my six attributes that I kind of consider to be our team DNA with like important ratings attributes for my players. So, um, and then personality, and then I'm kind of looking at some, uh, contract information. Um, so their value, which it's an amateur team. It's an always an amateur team. So my the player's value to me is $0. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave that for when I move on to professional clubs later. Um, and then you kind of get into some statistics as you scroll to the right. Uh, appearances, goals, goals per 90. Um, assists, assists per 90. And then their passing percentage kind of keeps me um, informed on how my players are, are sort of performing in, in some of the more, I have a, obviously a, a, a view which goes a little more in depth in statistics, but that kind of gives me a you know basic idea. And then I have full player status. I'll come over and look at this every now and then, but for the most part, it's, you know, I, I, I rarely ever see those. Um, so looking at the squad, a goalkeeper, uh, I've got a guy, Martin Soria. He, um, I, I think we discussed if not, we'll go real quick and look at in transfer history. I lost my goalkeeper Garland O'Brien was drafted um, by Chicago. He's still there. Uh, he is uh, nowhere close to starting for them. I believe he was third choice last I saw. Yeah, Bradley is their backup at best. He's third choice. So, um, but that was kind of cool to have a player drafted. Um, and I did, as I said, uh, well, I lost Tyler Bribble and then Omarson. Bribble was a midfielder. Wasn't really that good. I'm kind of surprised they even signed him. I'm, yeah, he is still there, but he's really not that great of a player. Omarson was a tough loss. He's off to Fjolnir. Um, so that's kind of what I'm dealing with there. So because I lost O'Brien, uh, I had to bump Soria up. He is my starting goalkeeper now. 
not anything special. Um, if anything, his handling it was and his reflexes is kind of what bumped him into the starting spot over uh, Vanny, um, who again, not you know, I don't have anybody that's that's, that's very good. I rotate those guys, um, Soria and and Vanny. In the hopes that one of them kind of emerges, you know, see which one develops first. Surya does have a higher potential, so that's kind of what's giving him the nod there. Right back, um, right now I'm starting Jacob Ramirez. Um, does have good tackling and good positioning. I'd like for his passing numbers to be better, but that's where I'm at there. Um, I won't spend too long looking at the squad. You guys can kind of see what we're looking at. Uh, a couple players that I... That, uh, are good. Garza was a transfer I brought in from Oakland, who's a university close to mine. Pretty good center back. His tackling isn't great, but he has very good positioning and very good marking. Um, and I'm, because of that, I'm not trying to train him out of that marks opponents tightly. I don't normally like that attribute or that player trait. But with him, for our level, I'm going to leave it. He's also very strong. He, he jumps high. So I mean, these are all obviously good attributes to have for a center back. Um, and then Matt Bryant is another player I'm pretty excited about. He's only 19, so hopefully he's got three or four seasons with me. And it's a good pace for this age, for this um, this level. And so I'm excited about how he's going to develop. And then Lenny Johnson, who probably is my best midfielder overall, but his, tack his high tackling and his high strength makes him sort of an ideal number six. Uh, I actually would probably rather play him at eight, but I've got him at six. And he's doing pretty well there. Uh, another interesting player that I have is Marcus Ansel. He is Austrian, and he's actually getting called up to the Austrian U21 national team. He's got two caps, but he's been called up a lot more than that. Um, would like for his finishing to be better. And if I recall, I think I'm training him extra. No, I'm training his passing because his, his passing is poor. Let me go back to him. Um, yeah, only a seven passing, and his vision is a six. So those those you know those things need to get better because uh, my strikers are responsible for helping in the buildup. So um, so yeah, that's pretty much the squad. Uh, on sell, I don't anticipate keeping him very long. I've had I've had a lot of teams like foreign. I wouldn't say a lot. I've had a couple of foreign clubs come and try to sign him. And again, I, there's nothing really I can offer them to stay. I can't offer them more money. I can't offer them money at all. So all I end up doing is, is I offer them a contract and I hope that they stay. So far, on sales has, but I can't see him staying with us for you know his full four-year career. Dunwell, um, though, is a player who can fill in if I need him to. Um, he you know can mostly get the job done. I like his work rate. And his off the ball, those are two good attributes to have for that position. So um, right now he is my number two striker. So that's a basic look at my squad. And we'll get to know all these guys probably a little bit as we go, um, as we go through the season. Okay, now let's take a brief look at the results. How has my team been doing? Um, I am a few games into the season. Uh, and so far, I've won every match, which is, to me, somewhat surprising. Started the season away to... Uh, USC Upstate and um, started with a kind of a defensive posture and it really worked out. I got a one nothing win, um, which was kind of cause was cause for cautious optimism. Um, and then we moved on to a home match against Liberty and got a big five to one, five to zero win. All five goals came in the first half. I actually started my second team for this match. I was trying to rotate a little bit and my second team built that big lead, which is, not crazy. Liberty, Michigan State, that's wouldn't be a, a shocking result. Michigan State should beat a team like Liberty by that much. Uh, then I rolled into the Naval Academy, which is, um, again, not a great team, but I, I didn't handle this one very well tactically. And so Navy was able to keep themselves in the game. They actually took the lead one to nothing. Then I had to score twice to jump out in front, to, and then they actually equalized. But I scored two more goals and put it away. Uh, then came home, and this was a big win. Wake Forest is a respectable program. Uh, they're one of the more well-known, stronger teams in, in college soccer. They're from the Atlantic Coast Conference, which is probably that. It's probably the strongest conference in college soccer. 
And so to get a 4 nothing win was big, especially when we had a player sent off. We had a player, Steve Weiss, my left wing, was sent off at halftime, right before the right before the half. And so even though he went off, we still controlled the game for the most part and even got a goal in the 70th minute to really kind of height to put it away. And so uh, that was a great win. Then we go to Brown, who in our group, they actually were the, they were on top. They were the best team in the group. They had won, all, I think we had, we both had won all our matches, but they had played one more than us. So um, they had a player sent off right after. It was kind of a crazy start. So Del Campo scores a goal, and then they had a player, German Campo, Kano, commits a foul and gets sent off uh, right at like a minute after our opening goal. And then my left winger sinks the free kick to make it, Two to uh, two to zero, and so we had a two nothing lead, and we had a we had a man advantage, and I probably got a little overconfident, made a tactical change, and they would score not long after that. So they um, they were able to make a game of it because I again I'm still figuring things out kind of tactically, but we walked out with a five to two win, which kind of establishes us right now as the best team in our non conference group, which is it does not really matter at all. Except for you know you're getting oh you're getting matches. Um, so my live com today is going to be against Ohio State. We'll look at Ohio State real quick. Uh, they are not a bad team. Um, you look at their players and they do have some some threats, especially up front, which kind of concerns me a little bit as my back line is not it's not uh, invincible. Um, so you know, they have Ryan Vargas. He is a, you know, Brian Williams being injured probably helps me a little bit. He's, you know, he's not he's not a bad player. Um, but they do, and their strikers are definitely concerning. Jones not so much, right? He's not he, five to ten finishing is not anything scary. But Todd Layton uh, is going to be a concern. Um, five to fourteen with my luck, that's a fourteen. His finishing is a fourteen, uh, but obviously a great header. Now the good news is I've got a guy who's six four, and I got a guy with um, like I think a fourteen or fifteen jumping rating. So hopefully, you know they can um, they can keep him at bay. Uh, looking at Ohio State's results, they are three two and two. They've won three matches, drawn two, and lost two. Um, so kind of hard to get a good gauge on them. Last year, we'll just look back. They uh they did make the Big 10 tournament semifinal. They did not qualify for the champion for the NCAA championship tournament. Um but they did beat uh Michigan State on a golden goal 1 to 0, which that is a, an interesting rule difference in that um in college soccer, you play a golden goal overtime and before you end in a tie. There's no penalties. So, um, yeah, so that's the team that we're looking at today, and we're going to try and win our first Big Ten match of the season, and we'll see how things go. All right, let's get down to business. We've got um, Ohio State. Uh, in real life, there that is kind of a rivalry, Michigan and Ohio State. Michigan State, Ohio State. Just to look here at the odds, Ohio State is favored 2-1, to one, and that's Probably more to do with their last season, as Ohio State was a much better team than Michigan State last year. This year, their recent form, obviously they're a little more inconsistent, <clears throat> whereas my form is excellent. They um, do have, I've got 15 players on register, but that's because they're all young. They um, Same with them, five players ineligible. They do have a couple injuries that are tough. Uh, right now, I'm bringing a healthy squad, for the really for the first time this season. As you saw, I had a couple guys that were uh, recovering from injury uh, referee has given out he averages he doesn't average a, a ton of red cards right so that's uh, uh, something to keep an eye on i guess he does average giving out four yellow cards a match well three and a half which is not terrible so i'm not going to worry too much about about um discipline to start um um i don't think there's much else here to see um my plan Today is I'm gonna start with my cautious setup. I'm gonna back it off a little bit. Um, I do anticipate Ohio State coming at me. As, as you can tell, those look like their fullbacks are are advanced, so they're gonna be attacking. Um, so I'm I'm gonna pull I'm gonna pull back a little um, just to see how that goes. I actually kind of anticipate a loss. I, 
I'm still not where I want to be on the attack. I'm scoring goals, as you guys saw. I'm actually scoring more goals than I did with Brazos Valley. But I also... The goals I'm scoring are not the kind of goals that I should be scoring with my tactics. So, um... So we'll go, we'll go, ooh, that's positive. We don't want to do that. Uh, so we'll go with our cautious tactic. Um, just kind of see how that, how it goes to begin. Um, oh, yeah, I, I don't, it's a question. So, uh, you know, it's going to do injury problem. I, I always just say he's being rested. I, don't, I get that question all, every game. Um, performable, yeah, I know we can win. All right, so shake hands with Ohio State's coach. I don't even know who it is. This is bad. I, I used to follow college soccer pretty closely, but I haven't in a while. So um, so we're on the director mode. I Again, I don't a director um, view. I'm not crazy about that view, and I'm going to pause this because for some reason this is always resetting now, and I've got to figure out what's causing that. Get this down to here. Didn't take me long to reset it, but it's kind of irritating that I keep having to. Okay, and we can raise our advice up to right about there. So they're playing it across the back. And so to start our build up here. Pretty sure with this, I've got it to where I'd. They do seem to be sitting back, so I'm wondering if I shouldn't go balanced. I get, I, it feels like, I don't know about how you guys feel, it feels like I get a lot of offside calls. It's maddening. Johnson with a free kick right to the goalkeeper, but that's good. First shot of the game goes to us. So far, possession looks good. And Ohio State picks up the first yellow. And Johnson with a free kick just laid it back. I really want to at least thump in the box there, right? My real life team. We um one of the things, one of the deficiencies I think with FM is you're not able to set up. I don't know. I guess what I would call choreographed set pieces. I would really like that ability. The um, especially when it comes to free kicks. Like when you when you have an indirect free kick, I would like to be able to. Give a little more detailed instructions than what we what we get to. I'm looking at the condition, we do seem to be more fit, so hopefully that'll make a difference. Well, they got a full bench though with guys 100%. So once they start bringing those guys in, fitness won't be as big a difference. So maybe I should start thinking about that now. <clears throat> Bernardo buys another free kick or another corner kick. Johnson to Weiss, who lays in the box. Oh, header! I think that was Hansel, but. Keeper made the save. So far, so good. So this is our first Big Ten Conference match, which, and offside again. Is that two? I've got a, I have two offsides. Feels like we get a lot. But college soccer, you have uh, teams are kind of separated into conferences. Um, and it's kind of an interesting, I don't know how to describe it. They, the teams themselves join conferences. They, the, the league doesn't separate them into different and Ohio State gets a corner. Oh, I got a Jumbotron. That's funny. I don't think that's real. I don't think they really have a Jumbotron at the Martin Stadium. Oh, an Ansel with a nice tackle, but Hernandez makes an important tackle. Probably saving a chance. So this game is ugly so far. Again, I don't have the players that I would really like to be able to play my style. And Lenny Johnson gets a yellow, and that is not good. Really don't like my number sixes to get yellows. Yeah, I may switch to balance just to see how it goes. And another yellow. I always, I guess, I don't know, you guys can tell me if y'all you, don't, but I always set my tackling to ease uh, ease off after they have get a, they pick up a card. 
I'm not sure that it makes a difference. You know, it's one of those things that feels like it does, but I've had guys who get a yellow. Oh, that's a bad giveaway. Whew. I've had guys get a yellow and then put the ease off tackles on and then they still pick up a red. They still get a second caution. Yeah, Ohio State seems to be putting things together. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go balanced. And immediately we get a shot. Maybe that's what I needed to do. Well, we're at halftime. Um, yeah, not good. <laughs> not good for either team, really. The only good news is that is Ramirez lost in one back possession more than any other player on his team. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, so we'll tell him, keep it up. Honestly, draw wouldn't be the worst thing. Uh, I am going to, again, go back to my yellow carded players because I switched tactics and make sure that they're easing off. And we'll start the second half. Still on balance. See, it's stuff like that. Like, you, you can't complete a five-yard pass to a, to a man running an overlap. That's highly frustrating. You know, I know it's just one little highlight, but if that's in a highlight, it probably happens quite a bit. And here's a decent build-up to Bryant. Bryant is one of my better players. Tries to get a cross off, but Ohio State gets a block, and so we have a corner. Weiss bumps it up. Can't get the shot. Oh, oh man, I can't get that last, that finish. Uh oh, this is bad. Okay, crosses the box are not good because they're they've got that big striker, but he was nowhere to be found, and we get the ball. All right, let's get that ball back. Give me give me the ball. And they had an offside. I guess three is not a crazy number. Johnson puts a free kick into the keeper's hands. Trying to decide what to do with subs. I'm going to start subbing. But if this match goes into extra time, I want to make sure that I'm fresh. Jones. Johnson out to Ramirez. Yeah, let's switch. Rotate. Circulate. <laughs> don't even show me the... I don't even want to see the offsides. Don't show it to me. <laughs> Not an offside like that. All right, Cantu shot, ricochets, and deflects go out for a corner. Let's make something happen right here. Goal, goal. Give it to me. Give it to me. D. Johnson gets the ball back. We can't put it on target. That's another thing I do is I train all my wingers and my forwards. I try to, to have the player trait of place shots. I, I, I feel like we, we at least test the keeper. At least make the keeper make the save. What a waste of a build-up when you just thump the ball into row Z. All right, we're at the hour mark. It's time to start thinking about subs. I'm not going to make any yet. I'm going to wait till we get down into the 70s. But nobody's playing that well, so I've got a bunch of guys I could easily sub off. All right, Daniel Johnson taking the corner. Puts it in the box. The far post can't get a finish. Can't even get a shot there. Bernal get back. Back Bernardo Bryant to Weiss, who loses it immediately. And Ohio State building. Oh, let me guess, another offside. The long throw into the box and nothing. Bryant. Cantu to Jones. Ooh, off the bar! Ansel, please give me that. Please just give it to me. Please give me that goal. It is. Yes! I felt like he can't be offside on his own shot. Yeah. <laughs> he fell. Had time to get back up and put the finish in. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, he's on there. Yeah, so whatever. We'll take it. Now we got to watch and see. I need to see if I need to make a change. 
tactically. We gotta hold on for 20 minutes here. Ah, oh, keep that in. Just little stuff like that. Yeah, they're gonna start coming at me, so I need to go back to cautious. I'll go ahead and do it, and if I'm I'm the guy who's cursed by the making the change during the highlight, you get scored on. I that's that's oh, on sale. If coaches had player traits, if managers had player traits, that would be my player trait is, or that'd be my manager trait is I make tactical changes during the highlight where goals are scored. Um. Okay, so let's look and see here. Yeah, see, my whole midfield has been almost useless. So you know what? You guys are all coming out. I've had enough. Bringing all of you out. Um... Yeah, you know what? Even my wingers. It's a five-player sub. My back line has been performing well. I will sub them, but for now, I'm going to leave them on. And you know what? Let's go ahead and let's, hey, hold the whole front six. Let's just bring them all out. Um, we're going to take off the ease-off tackles from my striker and my six. And do the pep talk thing. Now, I want to use a shout here to concentrate, but my guys do not handle that shout well. So what should I tell them? Oh, daggone it. <laughs> uh, free kick into the box. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go back to balanced. And I'm going to... Have to take ease off tackles for here too. Ah, that sucks. Uh, giving up an equalizer in a game that we've been the better team on a free kick. Uh, and the guy just sent in gets injured. That could be another one of my manager traits. So let's take him out. I'm not gonna. And they're building again. And cross into the box. Yeah, back line has been okay. I might sub them out if we go to extra time. Ah, that's, ah, I hate that. This is one I'll go back and maybe watch in full to see where things kind of didn't go great. But, you know, we had a free kick on the, you know, outside, just outside the box. Oh, I was going to be really mad if I lose on a free kick outside the area. <clears throat> All right, 24 seconds. Probably this is, we're going to go to extra time. I'm leaning way over, aren't I? I'm still in a shot, though. Okay. <clears throat> Go to the dressing room. Tell them to keep it going. Uh, I am going to go ahead, though, and sub in my back line. Let's bring in the backups. There's no penalties, but um, we do get a chance to win it to get all three points, so let's go for it. And I can take the ease off tackles off of that guy. And your pep talk. Alright, you guys are getting some extra extra football today. Okay. Let's see if we can get this thing done here. I won that ball, but put it out to touch. And there goes my screen again. Maybe if you guys know what causes that. So I've got the um, 
Match Mods by Michael Murray. If anybody, if you've been around the scene for any amount of time, you know that he puts those together. And what a, that in between highlight screen, you can put up to eight. Um, I don't know, whatever. Ah, oh, and we get the winner right away. Ninety second minute. Eat it, Ohio State. Eat it. We get that golden goal celebration. That's pretty cool. A cool little um, highlight there. Little scene when all the players run over from the bench. So, all right. Um, yeah, all right. That's a great result. We'll tell the guys they did well. Very pleased. Let's keep it going. And that puts us, hey, we're on top of the Big Ten, right? We're at least tied for top, uh, tied for first. We'll look at the result. I don't think I have to. The um, yeah, there's no you don't get extra points or whatever for a extra time win, but that's exciting. All right, so a two to one win over Ohio State. We are um, tied for first with Penn State and Rutgers, who both have um, one and zero records. So a good way to start. Um, yeah, we'll go back look at it a little bit here. Let's go to the stats. Yeah, I mean, we did control the match. You know, we had more shots. Um, we both had clear-cut chances, although I feel like we had better chances than theirs. Um, possession, 61%. I don't even have the players I want yet, but we still, you know, controlled that, which I found can be tough against a 4-1, 2-1-2. Um, passes, yeah, passing into defense. I need to look at that. 78% is not good, so that's... Probably some changes I need to make. Sometimes it's harder for me to see those in the directors or in the um, yeah the director camera view. So, but great win! All right, so that'll do it for episode ten of American Football nineteen, and it was a good episode. Uh, looked at the team that I've built, looked at our results so far, and then we got to see a pretty cool live com played Ohio State, which is a you know decent rival for Michigan State. The big uh, win to start the conference season. And you guys got to see the sort of a unique feature of college soccer, and that is the golden goal overtime, where once you score a goal, that ends it. Um, I'm sure most of you guys know that rule, but you kind of got to see it. Um, so that was neat. And you know, I got to see the cool little celebration with all my guys running off the bench. So that was fun. And our next episode will probably pick up with that Michigan game. Michigan, Michigan State, obviously that's a big rivalry. They're uh, two in-state opponents, kind of like a derby match. Um, so that'll be fun. So if you have any ideas, suggestions, comments, criticisms, please post them in the comments. And this is Uncle Sam FM signing off. See you next time.